Hey YouTubers, it's me, Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. I want to thank you for joining my channel. I know it's been a while. I'm going to keep at this and hopefully I'll be back sooner than later. And I want to thank my subscribers and the people that join me. And I want to thank my new subscribers and my old time subscribers who make comments and really valuable comments. Um, fix It Stupid has been on my channel and a subscriber of mine for a long time. I really appreciate you. And there's somebody new, it kind of made me laugh, sort of copied your name. His name is Fix It Yourself. <laughs> yourself, Y-E-R-S-E-L-F. I like that. That made me laugh. Even today on Nagasaki Day. So, uh, And then I, there's a new subscriber named Celeste Govanati. That was pretty good. And Alex Smith. Alex Smith and I have been friends on uh, Facebook for a long time. So I'm glad you guys have come to my channel. And I even like it when people who aren't my subscribers make comments um, like there was a guy called Shin Jokabe from Japan that made a great comment. So I hope you guys are reading the comments on my channel. And then a man who, I don't know if it's a man or if it's Nase or Nace Camdress. Anyways, he called me one of the worst interviewers and he was right. That wasn't really a very good interview, but it did help me because I'm more conscientious about not talking over my guests or even actually people in conversation that's my brain goes so fast i'm like yeah 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 get on with it and i have to just slow it down and be more respectful so even though the comment was harsh i have to say i agreed with him and i didn't really mind it so uh, i hope i hope he comes back to my channel or she comes back or they or whatever it is they want to be called um but today is like i said earlier nagasaki day and i did not i was working as usual uh, and I really didn't get a chance to go out and meet with anybody, do any of the commemoration stuff. And it led me to think about how, like, here we are now commemorating about every three months because the nuclear industry has been around for long enough now that they have some kind of nuclear, like what happened in, uh, in Russia this last week. I don't know if you guys saw it, but the Russians on their, one of their military sites, they had, there was some kind of a nuclear meltdown something went off there bombs went off if you saw how those people were dressed they were in suits full suits like radiation protection so something happened in russia this week but this is our new reality right and i was thinking about how much it costs us people think oh well we've moved on from japan and you know that was a unnecessary bombing, especially Nagasaki was completely unnecessary. They just did it to experiment on what they considered uh, like useless feeders, basically. They, you know, they're very racist, the people that make these decisions and very bigoted. They really, they only believe that a few small slice of society is worth anything. So the rest of us, they can just like psh, disregard us, which is what they've been doing. But I decided to go to the Department of Energy thing and look at the Department of Energy budget and figure out how much of the budget is actually spent from the Department of Energy on nuclear. It is a shock. The budget, the overall budget is 31.7 billion with a B. And you know how much we spend on the nuclear programs inside the Department of Energy? And there's actually, there was some excuse me, there were some slices that were sliced out that unspecified amounts, but this is what they have committed to. We're actually paying 74% 74 of our budget at the Department of Energy is spent on nuclear. These are the numbers. 16.5 billion on the NNSA, and that is the National Nuclear Safety Administration. I believe that's the NNSA. And $6.5 billion on 16 sites in 11 states. Now, if you ask me, those numbers should be reversed. And then $303 million on legacy management. Now, this is the 2020 budget. And this is an increase of one point, I think it said $1.9 billion from last year. But this is something that all of us need to, I'm going to look into this. Legacy management are the people that's handling Savannah River. Um, well, they're the people that Trump just uh, have outed, you know, Hanford, uh, National, the Idaho National Lab Laboratory, um, 
what's the one in New York? Uh, Livermore. So uh, Trump recently disallowed the Nuclear Safety Board from going on there. That's the NNSA, right? So that was that National Nuclear Safety Defense Board. And they were the oversight committee to see this. So what they want to do is transfer this, these legacy sites, like the $6.5 billion, and they want to put it into legacy management. So part of this proposal is to transfer all of the fuse wrap sites into the legacy management sites. And I, I don't know about that because I think the De US Department of Engineers, as far as they can, they're honest. Like this is the thing as much as they can be honest. Like I've seen this happen with them in the people in St. Louis. I've watched the, the hearings. Like some of them, I mean, this is the thing. I, I tweeted this today that to, this is the week that scientists gave, gave up their integrity and for, and really ha have forsworn their oath to science in, because their bosses told them to for money, essentially for their jobs, for financial security or so-called financial security. If we had scientists telling us the truth, the real truth, we would not have nuclear anything. They would be shutting it down. But the reason that we have anything nuclear is because we have a nuclear work. We are basically, our budget, not only does our budget, 50% of our budget go to the military, but 73% of our Department of Energy budget goes to the nuclear industry, which is only there to service the military. That's why we have them. We have nuclear power facilities to produce plutonium-239, period. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it, it, it's just beyond comprehension. What's the answer? <laughs> I mean, I think we just need to keep organizing and talking and saying, hey, pressuring our elected, like I definitely am going to call my elected officials and tell uh, Pete DeFazio, I do not want this government up, up ending again, still 80 years of what little tiny nuclear safety we had in the legacy management budget. That is where they get to it's where all the snakes lie, the worst of the snakes. This is not a good thing, folks. Uh, we got to pay attention to these things. It's kind of bizarre, but we do have to pay attention to them. If we're going to live in a democracy, which we don't have right now, by the way, it's becoming quite apparent <laughs> uh, that there's no real democracy. We have sham elections on both sides. It's not just Trump you know, being, having the Republicans Jimmy rig the machines, it's the Democrats doing the same thing. It's like, pull the strings. Who does the oligarch want in right now? So who knows, you know, what it's going to be. That's the state of the world. Post Nagasaki Day, post Hiroshima Day. Our future is limited, for real. Like, we have a very limited future because of nuclear contamination and it is not waste. I'm really going to stop calling it waste. It's not waste. It is nuclear byproduct and they want the byproduct so that they can create nuclear wars because war is profitable because we are assets on a balance sheet and they can kill us and then they get paid money for killing us. It's just insane. It's like them caging the children. We're paying billions of dollars to cage children who have family members in the United States. It's incomprehensible that we are doing this, that my and your tax dollars are doing that, that 74% of our budget to the Department of Energy goes directly to nuclear programs with some several hundred million dollars unspecified between coal and nuclear. It's 
incredibly incomprehensible how very little control we have over this. And this is why people get on this whole, you know, like the 5G thing, man, they're rolling that out. What's really interesting about the 5G is that they're rolling it out just about the same time that they are rolling out, you know, normalizing uh, radioactivity through the whole, um, the no Olympics, you know, like the uh, 2020 Olympics. So this is another thing I, and I don't know anything about it, but I want anyone who knows about this in my channel to tell me about it. It's called, I tried to read about it, but I don't, honestly, my brain, it doesn't quite compute that stuff. I'm not plugged into that. And I, this is about computers. <laughs> this is the exascale computer systems. And from what I understand, it's going to be 10 times or a million times a million times as fast as our current computers. And the United States government is spending a billion dollars on it. That's in the budget somewhere, that current budget, and in the other part of the budget that I was looking at. And Exascale, it's called Exascale Computer Systems. So this is my question. I think it said that it's a million times, a million times, a million times faster than a million times or something like some. And so it's called like a, a flip bite or a flip something. They come up with these funny names. But my question is this. Why, what would the use of that be if it was like super fast like that? If it could do that like my thinking is because they're going to roll this out the plan is to roll it out and have it in action by 2021 so they're spending about a billion dollars on this so what is it gonna do like what will that do to our systems our culture how does it allow them to come in and turn on anything they want and watch you i mean it's kind of like seriously hardcore big brother right <laughs> But if any of my followers or listeners or subscribers or any of you guys that listen to me and join my channel understand that thing, I sure would love a comment or two about it because, um, you know, like earlier I told you, I spent almost my entire adult life believing that nuclear energy was safe and perfectly fine because I believed our government and I was literally completely dumbfounded in 2012 when I discovered we had been lied to all of our lives. And it is completely stunning that people continue to turn their brains off to this because ever since I hit me like what it really means, to me, this is the most important, urgent issue on our planet. Not just stopping nuclear weapons, stopping the contamination of nuclear byproduct which is plutonium, tritium, americium, cesium, all of these like imiums and all those different things that they give us. It's a world that the scientists do not understand. And instead of lying about it, I want nuclear truth. We want the facts and we want to be able to protect our families so that we know what we're exposing our children to. But to force people to live in Japan or in New Mexico around all this nuclear waste or in St. Louis or up in Hermiston and then just pretend like, oh, ho, hum, it's perfectly fine. And let's go to a commemoration of Nagasaki Day and Hiroshima Day and Chernobyl and say, oh, thank God that didn't happen to us. Yes, it did. It's happened to all of us, and it is continuing to happen because guess what, folks? None of those things have gone away. Not one of them are safe. There isn't a single nuclear dump site with nuclear byproduct on it that is safe and contained and managed and remediated. The remediated places are still contaminated. But the places that have been remediated where they've taken the waste, you know, the, the, uh, the, the byproduct away and buried it somewhere else and made it someone else's problem. And then they come and dump 20 or 5 inches of sand or 20 inches of sand or dirt on it. That's called remediation. They put salt down and then dirt and then they're good to go. That's not remediation at all. Let's just be clear. So I do not know how people can just go... God, I'm glad it didn't happen to us. It did. It did, folks. 
And this is why I can't stop doing these YouTube channels because I want people to like get it that it's on us. And then they're going to bombard us with these freaking 5G phones, which very soon our phones are going to be obsolete again. So put your courage feet on you guys. And um, I want to thank everybody for joining us again. You can I'm on Instagram under Nuts for Art, by the way, but it's kind of different. I do a lot of political ranting because, as you guys know, I am definitely a hardcore flaming liberal. And uh, uh, I post about Little Mussolini as much as I do Trader Trump. So <laughs> Little Mussolini Pelosi, that's what I call her, Little Mussolini Pelosi. So ciao, you guys. I thought about doing, uh, here I go, I'm going to ramble a minute more. Maybe in the comments you could tell me that too. I thought about doing political rants because uh, my friends are like, man, you should talk about this on YouTube. But on my YouTube channel, uh, I've gotten some pushback whenever I've gone off of the topic of nuclear. And I don't know, like it all, to me, it all ties in together because I don't think any of those people have any real political freedom anyways. So anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Ciao.